So I've been mentioning metaphysics a lot in my last few videos, and a few people whose opinion uh, I really value and respect have pointed out that um, I shouldn't have been dismissing the need for metaphysics so quickly. And I think uh, what I was basically doing was trying to say we need to show rational metaphysics the door, not necessarily spiritual metaphysics, which... Uh, rational metaphysics, they want to be, or mean to be, the eternal truth. When you devise a rationalist system to explain everything, say like a physical grand unifying theory which explained what happened uh, at the Big Bang, how the laws of nature were formed, and you know, if we knew that, we would know how it would end as well. Um, rationality sees everything as determined, and determined by certain laws uh, that we can measure. And that, I think, is, uh, well, it's sort of a scaffolding, allowing a, a higher stage of consciousness to grow, and once uh, the higher stage has sort of uh, developed uh, sufficiently enough that it can support itself without the scaffolding, then you kind of have to shed the scaffolding. Uh, and that's the, that kind of rationalist scaffolding. Um, the kind that supposed nature was determined, the kind that ignores experience altogether, needs to be shed. Um, and see, this is what's, cru what's crucial to spiritual metaphysics, is that they be based on experience rather than, uh, than measurement, because from the rationalist perspective, um, there's nothing but measurement. There is no experience. There's no consciousness. There's only measurement. Particles, atoms, energies, laws, forces... Uh, but no freedom, no openness to experience. And so, you know, when you talk about spiritual metaphysics, they're not just measurements, they're descriptions of experience. And the whole idea of having them is to communicate them to others so that through continual uh, co-creation, these metaphysical systems grounded in experience are refined. Uh, because people come to agreements about what is being experienced. And of course, the reason we still call them metaphysical experiences is because they're not strictly empirical uh, in the sense that they can be sensed by the eyes, the ears. Uh, they're, they're sensed by the mind, um, by something which emerges as the five senses combine and through this um, it's really the imagination um, this process of perception the uh, out of the five senses emerges this higher um, this higher I this this new level of reality and to talk about it to describe it you have to be metaphysical because you're no longer talking strictly about the physical world that you see and touch and feel. Um, you're talking about a different faculty. And it's the kind of faculty that's inherently free. It's continually discovering and creating new things, uh, new realities, new experiences. So it can't be determined. You can't find the law that describes the beginning and the end. Uh, the end is still developing. You're participating in its development. Um, your descriptions of your experience uh, by being shared with others are participating in the unfoldment of uh, you know, this evolutionary path. The quest for eternal truth or uh, whatever you want to call it. So rationalist metaphysics, the laws, the determined systems, that's, it was a pacifier.
I mean, it's time to to grow up and face our experience open-mindedly without preconceived a priori assumptions. Um, and you know, initially that can be frightening. So we also have to get over the fear, dive in to our experience with, I guess, uh, a certain degree of faith that reality will catch us.